Honda's big unveiling event signals that they want to overtake Toyota as world's number one brand the most clueless about electric cars. Forbes contributor Tom Malogny will be here to clue them in. Plus, in other electric car news, Tesla breaks their own rules in favor of an investor, but then makes everybody else happy by announcing they'll also be making beer. Lucid unveils its answer to the autopilot and two unknown car makers unveil their EVs. All of this is coming up next. Welcome to E4 Electric. Don't forget to click on that subscribe button and the bell notification icon so you don't miss anything moving forward. Honda had a big announcement on Wednesday saying that they too now want to make real electric cars like the rest of the cool kids and go all electric. Well, not right away. Uh, that would be crazy. Uh, by the end of the decade, you know, 2030 and, and, and not everywhere. I mean, what's the rush? Uh, just in China? You know, to test out the market to see if this whole electric car craze is really going to take off by then. But whether or not Honda will have any type of electric strategy beyond China in the near future is just as unclear as their unveiling presentation, which was not even broadcasted in HD, something that I do out of my spare bedroom every week. So Honda unveiled five electric vehicles under their EN series, which I'm assuming stands for E nah. Two models, the ENS1 and ENP1, have been unveiled and are set to go on sale in the spring of next year. And I know what you're thinking. Hey, Alex, uh, those models look exactly the same. And I say that's ridiculous. They're totally different colors. See? Oh, other than that, no, they're exactly the same car, just made in two different factories. Both twins will have an equivalent of around 220 miles of an EPA range, which is not that impressive unless you compare it to Honda's only electric and very adorable vehicle Honda E with literally half of that range while still charging around 35,000 American dollars for it in Europe and Japan. Only a few thousand people have been fooled by this adorable yet ridiculous offer and purchased the Honda E while everybody else said e nah. The presentation has also showcased some safety features like protecting the occupants of the car in case of a collision, but not with a huge truck or a pole, but with what I can only assume a nice librarian lady who for some reason was also handcuffed. It has also demonstrated that the testing of the car has been done in what appears to be the world's largest public shower, while claiming that these are EVs that only Honda can create, which is true because most other brands would just be embarrassed. But in addition to all of that, Honda has unveiled three more electric vehicles, and I'll tell you all about them in just a second. But before that, a quick reminder that this video is brought to you by Flow. If you're looking for one of the most elegant designs for your home charger, the Flow Home X5 was made for you, featuring beautiful, sturdy, 100% aluminum casing. Get your exclusive $150 discount in the description of this video. And by Climate Exchange, Tesla raffle is back. You can win a Tesla of your choice, but only 5,000 tickets will be sold. Get yours using a link in the description of this video. And even if you don't win, the money will go towards a great environmental cause. So Honda has unveiled these three additional concepts, the EN Coupe concept, the EN SUV concept, and the EN GT concept. Now, I know these look like the Academy of Art College of San Francisco freshman year final exam submissions, but Honda says these will go on sale within five years. As you know, the other two Japanese auto manufacturers are Nissan and Toyota, where Nissan is just about to start production of their second EV Aria, in addition to producing the second generation Leaf for a few years now, and Toyota, while kicking and screaming, will produce an EV next year for the US market and have invested billions of dollars into its electric program. I think Honda is really making the case for the world's most clueless automaker. For more, as always, we turn to the Forbes contributor and the host of the State of Charge YouTube channel, Tom Malogny. All right, Tom, so do you think that Honda has actually outdone Toyota in 
how bad their electrification strategy is? So, you know, it's very close, but personally, I hold Toyota to a higher standard because they're a much bigger company. They have a lot more resources. And in my opinion, Alex, there's no excuse why they're not further along in electrification. They both get, you know, either a D minus or an F, but I really have a bigger problem with Toyota because I think that they're more capable of really putting forth a really good electric car at this point. And, uh, you know, Honda's bad, but Toyota's worse. No, okay, I never got D minuses or Fs in school, but 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 I know the friends of mine who did, what they did to, to improve that, they started cheating off of the other kids, which is an option for Honda. The other kids are actually showing them the way. You know, how is, how is Honda's leadership not realizing that by 2030, they gotta be more aggressive if they wanna stay in business. Yeah, it's, you know, we don't know what's going on behind closed doors, Alex. I'm sure there is an extraordinary internal struggle in all of these companies. And there's, there's camps that are saying, look, we've gotta go harder into electrification. Then there's, you know, the old school, good old boys that are saying, no, we can, we can ride out hybrids for another decade. You know, the, the customers aren't ready to buy these. And plus, I think part of the problem is that the Japanese government isn't really pushing zero emission vehicles as hard as, say, the, the, the European countries are and the U.S. So that's giving the, the Japanese automakers a little bit of a pass. But I think it's going to come back to bite them in the long run. And uh, I think they're going to find that they're not competitive by the end of this decade. So I've done this with Sandy Monroe and Rich Rebuilt, and I think let's let's do this with you as well. I, it's my favorite thing to do because, all right, let, what what if you wake up tomorrow in the uh, in the body of the CEO of Honda and you have to run the damn thing? What would you do differently? Oh God! Well, the first thing I'd do is get a fully electric CRV on the road as quickly as possible, maybe with about 250 miles of range. 200 kilowatt DC fast charging so it can go from 10 to 80 percent like 25 minutes or so. I mean, that's the, the CRV is their top selling vehicle. Make an electric version of that as quickly as possible. And then you got to start looking at investing in battery plants. Uh, you've you've got to secure uh, supplies and, and batteries in the future, either through contracts or making them yourself. So uh, long term, they have to make sure that they'll be able to secure enough battery cells for this uh, transition to electric vehicles. It's coming, whether they're on board with it or not, electrification is going to cascade across the industry over the course of the next 10 years. Well, if I was voting in a shareholder meeting uh, at, at Honda's headquarters, uh, you would get my vote. <laughs> Quite honestly, I don't want it. I don't want to be the CEO of any automaker. I'm happy doing what I'm doing here and being a weekly guest on e for electric Did you guys know that Tom has his own YouTube channel? That's true. I put a link to it in the description of this video. Before we get to the next story, let's get to the grumpy comment of the week, which this time around was kind of difficult to pick out of a few excellent candidates. From this one saying, why don't you report on Russia and Putin? Tesla is out of your league. To which the obvious answer is, I don't want to because at least Elon Musk doesn't poison his critics. Yet, to this one, where as a response to my community poll, which under $40,000 EV will be the best seller in the US next year, this guy answered, Alex is a tool, which is ballsy given the choice of the profile picture. But at the end of the day, I'm gonna go with the one from Kick Gunner, who said, I like your videos, but you need to get a new intro song. That jingle sounds like something from the 1980s car dealership commercial. How dare you? I will never change that awesome jingle. Never. N-E-V-E-R, never. Let me spell it for you just in case if I didn't make it clear. N for Nancy, E... Let's move on to the next story. And if you are wondering why most Teslas on the road are driving slower than your grandmother lately, well, it's not because they are dressing up as Priuses for this Halloween. It's because a lot of them are trying to earn a perfect 100 safety score from Tesla, which is a requirement to receive the latest release 
of the full self-driving software. Now, let's just put aside the fact that you have to pass a test to receive a feature that you already paid for. Tesla insisted that the better driver you are, the more they can trust you to hold their new baby. Unless you are an investor who is pretty vocal on Elon's favorite social media platform and the worst place on the internet, Twitter. His name is Ross Gerber and he claims he should have a score of 100 because of how good he is at driving in Los Angeles. Driving Los Angeles, how hard could it be to drive at 12 miles an hour for two hours a day without hitting a car in front of you that is also moving at 12 miles an hour. But it looks like Tesla took his word for it and gave him the release despite him not actually having the perfect 100 score from Tesla. What? What was his score? Well, it was a little bit lower than 100 and by a little, I, I mean a lot. His score was, ready for this, 37 as he was also, on top of that, stupid enough to actually confirm that to Electric. Uh, how many handcuffed uh, librarians do you have to hit to earn a score this low? I mean, if this was high school, with this score, Ross would be in special ed. So, what did Ross do once he's got the latest FSD release? That's right, he demonstrated to all of us how he got the 37 out of 100 score by filming himself, as you can see in a reflection of his instrumental panel, holding his cell phone in one hand while accelerating around the corner at over 40 miles an hour. That is unbelievable that he found a place in Los Angeles where you can drive for over 40 miles an hour. Wow. Let's move on to another self-driving software release story and last Wednesday Lucid has released theirs and they're calling it the Dream Drive. It has up to 32 sensors and the very first LiDAR in a production car in North America, Xpeng Motors already has a LiDAR in its P5 electric sedan in China. It tracks the driver with its internal camera to make sure you're paying attention and if it believes the driver is no longer paying attention, it checks if you are a loyal vocal Lucid investor and then it unlocks the latest release. I'm just kidding. Lucid doesn't have any vocal or loyal investors. Overall, there is really nothing too special about the Dream Drive. It has some pretty common driver assist features, but nothing of a Tesla caliber. And of course, nobody really got to test it because the media drive for the journalists conveniently happened before this was released. Speaking of new products, Tesla has unveiled a new product which out of all Tesla new offerings has the biggest chance to go in production on time and it is beer. Giga beer to be exact since it was unveiled at the Giga Fest at Tesla's Berlin Giga Factory. As you can see the design of the bottle was a Cybertruck inspired so let's hope that the delivery date wasn't. Now it's doubtful that Tesla will actually be brewing its beer itself much like with its other alcohol offering Tesla Kila, which is actually produced by Nosotros, Tesla will most likely co-brand the Giga Beer as well. I bet our friend Ross Gerber has one in his cooler right now. But let's move on to the next story and we have a few new electric cars coming to the market from two manufacturers that I've never heard of. Let's start with the Indy One from a California startup, Indy EV, founded in 2017 by some of the former Faraday Future employees. Indy One is a crossover that will start at around $45,000 and will launch at the end of the next year. You'll be able to reserve one in a few months. The company claims that their car will be the first vehicle to have an integrated supercomputer on board, but when questioned by The Verge, IndyEV admitted that the supercomputer is merely a custom Windows PC with an i7 processor and an NVIDIA graphics card. Which is pretty much the same what my staff member who did the research on this story is running on his work PC. The Indy One will have a 95 kilowatt hour battery pack that the company says is good for a range of 325 miles. It will accelerate from 0 to 60 in 5.5 seconds. The other EV maker that's bringing their cars to the US market is an existing Vietnamese car company, VinFast 
also established in 2017 just like the Indy EV but it already has some gas vehicles on the Vietnamese market. Now an interesting thing is its parent company Vin Group was actually founded as an instant noodle business in post-Soviet Ukraine before blowing up into a big multi-industry corporation. Now I was told that VinFast is working on the advanced technology where you won't need to add boiling water to their upcoming electric cars for them to be fully ready. It's all about the breakthroughs, people. The deliveries of their first EVs are just about to start in Vietnam. Meanwhile, VinFast will introduce two electric vehicles to the US market at the upcoming LA Auto Show, which I am a brand ambassador for. The E35, roughly the same size as the Tesla Model Y, with a promised range of 250 miles, and a bigger SUV E36, with up to 300 miles of range. Pre-orders will start in a few months and the deliveries are due by the end of the next year. Don't forget to join me for my subscriber hangout live on Tuesday at 1 p.m. You can set yourself a reminder on my homepage. And of course, I'm looking forward to all of your comments. Other than that, see you guys next time. And remember to stay charged.